Hey, YouTube. You guys had better be talking about work stuff. No chit chatting on the job. Nah, I'm joking. They're allowed to chit chat. I don't care. As long as the work gets done, they can talk all they want. Anyway, hi, welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Uh, today I'm gonna do another loyalty mission. But first, uh, Baylor. This is where we bought the, uh, the what's it? The, you know, the thing, the collector vest, the collector ship. A tiny rock planet, Elatha is noted for its frigid temperatures and crushing nitrogen and krypton atmosphere. Lying out beyond the Fomor belt, there is little to recommend it. Uh, I think this one's based, uh, the system is based on, uh, Celtic mythology, I believe. Baylor, Fomor. Kallistan. The hostile moon Kallistan is the largest satellite of the gas giant Cernunos. Cernunos. An ancient asteroid strike deposited major loads of element zero within the molten, molten sulfur mantle. Eldfell Ashland Energy's mining operations have made it the largest source of starship drive core material in the Attican Traverse. Kallistan is racked with volcanism due to tidal stresses from Cernunos. Because of weak solar output, Plant-like life on Kallistan is not carbon-based and photosynthetic, but silicon-based and thermosynthetic, requiring heat rather than sunlight to power its chemical reactions. These organisms flourish in volcanic vents and during solar flares, when Baylor can double or triple in luminosity. Sadly, sapient habitation is not possible here, and Kallistan's biodiversity is considered threatened by the Citadel Council Committee on Habitable Worlds. Probe away. another research project. And, even better, I can now uh, change my loyalty power when I am ready. Sir Ninos is a sizable gas giant with a hydrogen-nitrogen atmosphere. It is believed to be an extrasolar capture due to its close stellar location. In a rare phenomenon, it is near enough to its red dwarf star to be within the life zone, though its massive size prevents the tidal lock that usually occurs at such range. While nothing could survive on the surface of a planet with such crushing gravity, Cernunos moon Kallistan is habitable. Cernunos is skinned for its abundant hydrogen, and refineries on Kallistan process it into metastable metallic form for use as starship fuel. Launching probe. Partholon, a large, com a large planet composed of ice surrounding a rocky core, Partholon retains trace gases of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Its crushing gravity makes for an inhospitable stay and makes most mining infeasible. However, its orbit's proximity to the mass relay in the system means space travelers will, for the next few years, use it for a gravitational slingshot to add speed on their way to and from Callisto. Neat. Away. Very rich planet. Very mineral rich. Nice. Ah, here we go. Bress. A member of the Fomor Belt, Bress is a dwarf planet with no atmosphere. It is, however, rich in lithium, which is integral to the heart heat sinks of starships or handheld weapons. A large robo mining operation from Kallistan can be found here. Uh, let's see, do any of these systems have anything else? I wanna... I can't remember if any of these systems have any missions. Because sometimes, uh, just when you're, you know, running around this, uh, 
running around, you'll find a, uh, and I think they do. Right. I think a couple of them do have, uh, mission, so I'm side quest, so I'm not gonna do them yet. Instead, I'll just go straight to the Rosetta Nebula. Got a cat to pet right now. Uh, Mizraim, a small gas giant, Mizraim is primarily hydrogen and methane around a rocky core. There is no remaining trace of the civilization from Job on Mizraim itself, but debris orbiting the planet indicates that artificial satellites were once in place before being destroyed. Probe launched. Fluctuating a lot. Laban is a desert world with sea upon sea of scorching hot iron oxide, wearing away marbleized cliffs. Sounds pretty. Its atmosphere is thick and layered with significant layers of significant levels of oxygen trapped under an upper helium layer. Initially, surveyors detected traces of iridium from orbit, only to find a surprising archaeological discovery. The iridium came from bunkers on the surface, blown apart by a dreadnought class weapon. The logical conclusion was that the civilization on Job had reached Laban, and its outposts here were destroyed to make their extermination complete. So, presumably a race wiped out by the Reapers. One would have to assume. Is this going to be Job? Yes. Alright. I'm not actually ready to do side quest right now, so I'll just try to have to remember for later that uh, Job has uh, something. There we go. A hydrogen helium gas giant, Goliath's orbit takes it near the system's mass relay, a useful event for drive core discharges and automated helium-3 refueling platforms. Unfortunately, its orbit is currently taking it away from the relay, and it will continue this inconvenience for the next three galactic standard years. Away. How inconvenient. And I'm having to play with a cat in my lap now. So once I get to the uh, combat of the, in this episode, if, uh, if I do really... If I start to suck, uh, I'm just going to blame it on the cat. Yeah, yeah, it's all the cat's fault. It's not that I'm bad, it's, it's the cat. Uh, Parnassus. A boiling hot rock planet with extreme tectonic activity, Parnassus is home to many volcanic mountains. Surface scans reveal several geothermal and solar power, plant, power stations, tapping the planet's abundant energy. There is no history of the planet or its government in Citadel Council records. Given its proximity to a mapped and recorded planet like Selene, someone must have deleted Parnassus from the database. Ooh. Intriguing. Launching probe. Uh, Selene, a mid-sized hydrogen helium gas giant. Selene has an automated helium-free refueling station, indicating that this remote system was once inhabited. Its distance from the mass relay and archaic design of the fuel station suggest that this system was mapped by someone who did not go through the relay, but discovered an independent FDL exploration. Selene is within the frost line of its parent star, where gas giants do not normally form. For this reason, Selene is believed to be an extra solar capture. Probe launched. It's fine, don't worry about it, Edie. Uh, 
2175 AR2. Still formerly unnamed, this planet is a hydrogen helium gas giant with 21 moon sized objects. Launching probe. So pretty standard, then. And here we go. 2175 Aya. Named after an Asari scientist, this remote planet appears to have been on the list of forbidden mass relays that led to uncharted space. The little data available comes from one far-off probe flyby that reports two planets orbiting a white dwarf star. Your own scans yield far more interesting results. The planet is within the habitable zone of the star. It has oceans of liquid water and a thin nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere consistent with carbon-based plant life. It is possible this is an as-yet-unexplored garden world. General distress. Could be useful. Hugo Gernsback. Registration BW4610034087. Impact and unscheduled suborbital deceleration recorded. General distress. MSV Hugo Gernsback. Registration. Probe away. Scans have found something. Uh. So we gotta bring Jake up, because it's his loyalty mission. And uh, is there anyone I haven't used yet, or anyone I haven't used in a while? Yo, I'm pretty sure I haven't actually used Grunt yet, have I? Eh, the, this mission doesn't seem like the right place to use him, to be honest. Like, just narratively speaking, I mean, not much point in bringing Grunt along on Jacob's loyalty mission. Let's do Tally. Why not? Combat drone. Yes. You have upgraded the combat drone, so its electric shock damages target health, armor, and biotic barriers. The combat drone is rigged to explode when destroyed, pulsing energy that inflicts high damage from all nearby items. Uh, 100 pulse damage. Meh. Gonna go with attack drone. 40 points of damage isn't much, but eh, something. I'm actually not gonna not going to put anything yet, I don't think. Yeah, one point of pull is probably enough. Damage 30% of weapon damage over 3 seconds, 40% of fire damage, weapon damage over. Yeah, alright, I'll give him incendiary ammo. I should still be able to get uh, level 4 barrier. Oh, yeah. If I ever bother using him again after this mission, there's no guarantee that I will ever actually bother with him again. 
It would actually, I, I will be able to reassign points later, so yeah, let's go with uh, an explosive charge spreads the ammunition's payload on impact, potentially igniting the target at all nearby enemies. Your entire squad gains the effect of your incendiaries, allowing the spread pain panic in a level, very little crossfire. And I guess, yeah, I'll be able to, uh, just because I will be able to reassign the points fairly soon. I forget which of these guns is actually better. Ooh. Lovely planet. Mostly intact. They could have survived impact, but it's been years. Weapons. Right. Looks like it was stripped after the crash. They'd have tried to get a beacon up as soon as possible. Yeah, you can see uh, ammo powers. Uh, you can see... Give you a little icon on your guns. To let you know that they're uh, in effect. Pretty sure they're on your squad mates guns too. Hard to see on your squad mates guns, but I'm pretty sure they're there. That sounds bad. Yeah, that sounds really bad and really gross, and uh, I'll be honest, this mission is just really, really gross and creepy. Um, yeah. I suppose, honestly, content warning is uh, probably pretty appropriate for uh, for this episode, actually, for this mission. See, I'm just going to issue a content warning right now. Uh, this mission will deal with uh, sexual assault. And, uh, 
Yeah, that'd be terrifying, not being able to remember your own presumably daughter's face and name. There we go. Expect the luxury of do 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 process, but this isn't a military ship. Just bumping the command line up a notch doesn't work. Cap Captain Fairchild knew this crew, crew, crew. His replacement doesn't command the same level of respect. I'm hoping the man has it in him. Ten years ago, Jacob's father disappeared along with the Hugo, Hugo Gernsvet, the privately held frigate on which he served as first officer. Last week, the ship's beacon sent out a distress, uh, distress call reporting a crash on the planet Aya. Jacob would like to investigate. Humans detected Aya as an Earth-type world via telemetry in 2165. After probe surveys indicated life, lush vegetation, ample fresh water, and breathable air, the Alliance upgraded the planet to a Garden World colonization priority. Commanded by Captain Ronald Taylor, the crew of Alliance survey vessel Hugo Gernsback made planetfall on the jungle world in 2173. Soon after, ship transmissions inexplicably stopped. While the precise fate of the Hugo Gernsback command and crew is unknown, they are presumed killed in action and their vessel destroyed. So, yeah, this is uh, inaccurate. It describes uh, Ronald Taylor as the captain. He was the first officer. Um, most likely, the uh, I suspect the original plan was probably to have him as the captain, and then they probably changed their minds. And uh, they just forgot to change the... Uh, So what's it? Repeat, toxology alert. Danger of rapid neural decay. Local flora chemically incompatible with human physiology. Override. Beacon oh. resumed. Pause time, 8 years, 237 days, 7 hours. From the look of it, this beacon's been here a while. Why would they wait years to signal? Pause in beacon protocol. 8 years, 237 days, 7 hours. Pause is recorded as record deleted by acting captain Ronald Taylor. That's not right. My father was first officer. Ronald Taylor was promoted under emergency command protocols. Other flagged issues, unsafe deceleration, local food and neural decay, beacon activation protocols. I assume unsafe deceleration refers to the crash. <laughs> Give me the details. Following an unspecified impact and sublight drive failure, the Hugo Gernsback made an unscheduled descent at 465% of theoretical recommended suborbital velocity. The Hugo Gernsback then decelerated at 782% of theoretical recommended approach velocity, sustaining significant damage to investment and crew. Why are you comparing the crash to theoretical speeds? The Hugo Gernsback was constructed off-world. It is not rated for suborbital descent, and doing so exceeded operational parameters. Fair enough. Unsafe deceleration. That is uh, definitely a, a pretty interesting... Uh, pretty interesting alternative to saying crash. Who is in command of this ship? Where are the survivors? Captain Harris Fairchild reported killed following unscheduled suborbital descent. First Officer Ronald Taylor promoted infield to acting captain. But where is he now? The location of the remaining crew of the Hugo Gernsback is unknown. This beacon has been unattended for several maintenance cycles. Local food impairs brain functions? What are the effects? 
Impairment of mental function due to chemical imbalance begins within seven days of ingesting local flora, regardless of decontamination or preparation. Impact on higher cognitive abilities and long-term memory is cumulative, but significant within a standard month. It is not known if neural decay is permanent. Data collection was not completed. Yeah. So you can probably see where this is going. Why wasn't the beacon activated before now? This emergency beacon became functional after 358 days, 12 hours, following the unscheduled suborbital descent of the Hugo Gernsback. Activation was triggered remotely after eight years, 237 days, seven hours, on the authority of acting captain Ronald Taylor. Pause in beacon protocol is recorded as record deleted. So, it took almost a year to get the beacon up and uh, up and running, but then they held off for eight years. Come on, let's get going. Our father had a working beacon, but didn't signal for almost nine years. Maybe. That neural decay affected him. After 10 years, it must have. You came from the sky? The leader said someone would come. He delayed for so long, but he still has power. Some have lost faith. The hunters. They will have seen your star. They will not let you help him. Well, interesting. What are you talking about? You're not making sense. Uh, I, I don't remember how to say it. He's our leader and we serve so we can go home. But some want to fight him. They were, they were cast out. He exiled them. So they hunt his machines and those who help him. They don't believe that rescue will come. Watch out! Hunters, they won't stop until the leader is dead. Kill them! Agents of the liar! He will not escape! Get ready to fight! So apparently the neural decay doesn't stop them using guns. didn't have neural decay. They're crazy. My father wouldn't let this go on. Something is very wrong. You killed them, but there are more every day. They want to fight, but I just want to go home. She's lost it. We need to find someone who can make sense of this. So, yeah, you uh, may notice thermal clips. Which in universe have only been around for a couple of years. And yet we're finding them uh, at the crash site of a ship that crashed over nine years ago, or almost nine years ago. No, over nine years ago, almost 10 years ago. Story and gameplay segregation. And anyway, yeah, the, uh, Hunters. Bunch of jerk asses. Stripped for parts. Tech's wearing out. Those Hunters must be laying on the pressure.
Is that a settlement? They better be friendlier than the beach group. I need answers. These people seem calm, but they're part of the same group as the ones that attacked us. There aren't any men here. Maybe it affects genders differently? It makes males get violent. That's possible, but the woman on the beach said the exiled ones came back as hunters. It doesn't matter right now. One of these people must know what my father has to do with this. You have his face. He promised to call the sky, but he sends nothing. He forced us to eat. To... decay. You are cursed with his face. Yep. Once again, telling you a lot about what's going on right there. Not the best reaction to the family resemblance, Jacob. Why would my father force his crew to eat toxic food? Whatever's happening here needs to stop. He has a cruel face. His cruel face. I can't talk to you. I don't want punishing. I can't talk to you. I... Go away. You are like him. You will keep us here. Go away. You are like him. You will keep us here. What the hell? Somebody had to push them to make that. That's borderline worship. Yeah, that's, uh, quite a statue there. He keeps us, protects us, and we please him like he demands. Yeah! The hunters will kill you. They fight because he exiled them and waited too long. He is bad. He has a bad face like the other. Like him. You'll hurt me. Look at these spoiled food stores. They've been eating only that toxic local food for who knows how long. Like that wasn't obvious enough. his own crew to keep control? That's horrible. Well, that would make them hate him. But maybe it was just for defense. <laughs> yeah, Jacob, you're given way too much benefit of the doubt here, I think. Please, here. You could end it. You have his face. But you fight his machines. You might stop this. This, That's the plan. I forget how to read but this was the start what he promised and what they did to us we need the sky take us back to the sky jacob what does it say it's a crew log book some of them thought the beacon repair was taking too long they were afraid they'd run out of supplies and lose their minds to the decay my father restricted the ship food for himself and the other officers so they wouldn't be affected Everybody else had to eat the toxic food and hope for treatment later. The rest is a yeah. casualty list. A few mutinied over the decision. My father and his officers turned the mechs on them. He wasn't command material and it got to him. Couldn't keep the crew in line without violence. It didn't stop there. More incidents, harsh punishments. It's like they're cattle or toys in a year. 
all the male crew members are flagged as exiled or dead. They separated out the women, assigned them to officers like pets. And after the beacon is fixed, the officers mm -hmm. appear in the casualties too. After. My father took control and didn't stop it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so... You see why it should a, uh... See why I mentioned a, uh... A content warning. And, uh, yeah, there's a reason that this is probably the most hated loyalty mission in the game. Uh, so... The Black Man's mission is about finding out that his father built himself a harem of drug women. Yeah, it's... It's icky. It's, uh... It's gross. It is a super, super gross, gross, um, mission. Like, just, they absolutely screwed the pooch, uh, with, uh, with this one. It makes it one that... You really don't even want to play it. Because it's just... Bad. Like, it's just... It's just a really... Gross... Um... Gross ass mission, and the fact that they chose to give it give it to Jacob, who is black. No, that's even grosser. Whatever. Anything in there about whether the effects of the toxic food can be treated? Nothing. But it seems like the right call. If everyone gets it, who's left to fix the beacon? You'd never get out. But they did fix it. And the signal wasn't sent until now. I'm starting to see why. Does it say why he separated the men and women? Or is it as bad as it seems? No, it turns to gibberish. Maybe the men got violent early on, but from the state of this place, I'd say the hunter thing is recent. What he allowed here, Shepard? I don't see any justification. Yeah. Yeah, just screw this mission all around. He killed them? There were five after the crash. Medical, engineering, bridge staff. Should have had no problem fixing the beacon and keeping people safe. All killed within the same week. About a month after the beacon was repaired. Do you see an explanation for this? He's your father. Is he? None of this fits. Maybe the initial decision, but the rest? Abuse of power doesn't get any clearer than this. I need to find this man.
Yeah, honestly, it's just absolutely, absolutely awful uh, what they did with this mission. Just <sighs> all right, let's continue. Yeah, like his the initial decision, yeah. Letting people, letting some of the crew eat the tainted food while uh, keeping the senior staff sa safe, that does make sense. But... But the fact that they... But that he then... Really him. Just got free. He's covering his ass. It looks like the old bodies were posed like a warning. The newer bodies were just left wherever they fell. The hunters started fighting back. Speaking of fighting back. Hostile spotted. Sadly, I don't still have a cat on me to blame my uh, bad aim on. The cat did get down. I just suck. Incoming! Lost shields. Impact imminent. Impact event. Got him. Uh, Jacob? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of them around here. Tally, get down. We 
had his fun, and now he wants out. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't talk about your grandmother that way, Jacob. Uh, there's something else around here. I still have just a second ago. Where did it go? There it is. This might be useful. Luckily, I'm getting pretty close to the end of it. Eyes up front. Not my father. Trouble come. Toys. I need to look my father in the eye and hear him justify this. The uh, also fun fact: the mechs are supposed to be uh, relatively new developments as well. Uh, so yeah, this game, this mission, in addition to just being absolutely disgusting, also really violates continuity. Of the game. So. Minor complaint at that point, but. Just the Field same. Is clear. Thanks, Jacob.
You're here. I knew a real squad would blow through just fine. Sorry if the mech scuffed your pants. I'll get you something nice when we get back to Alliance Space. I've got to have some back pay coming. What about your crew, acting captain? Total loss. The toxic food turned them wild. They propped me up here in some kind of ritual behavior. Waiting for a chance to signal has been hell. That's the best you can do? You let all your people talk back like that? <laughs> Who are you exactly? Yeah, I'm not telling him yet. Uh... Ronald Taylor here is voiced by Dave Fenoy, who also voiced uh, Tarek back on Omega, and also voiced Okir, uh, Grunt's Papa. Anyway... Doesn't matter. You're running a very questionable setup here, Captain. Explain. Of course. Uh, it was chaos after the crash, and the crew never really accepted me as captain. They rebelled and trapped us here. Once they started eating the toxic food, I couldn't control them. And I couldn't get to the beacon. Just stop. We know what you did to your crew. Why let this go ten years? Who the hell are you? Taylor. Lieutenant Jacob Taylor. Jacob? My Jacob? Yeah, I wasn't going to spoil that surprise for Jacob. Now everyone knows everything. I want to hear you try and justify this. You have to understand. This isn't me. The realities of command, they change you. I wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. I made sure you were taught right. Before I left, I hoped to leave it at that. I'm not unreasonable, Captain, but ten years? What happened? God damn it! Why did you do this to your crew? There was resistance to the plan. Mutiny. We had to take a hard line to keep order. And things settled down. As the decay set in, we made sure the crew were comfortable. Some even seemed happier. Ignorance is bliss, right? And they were grateful for guidance. Like an instinct. Pure authority was... easy. At first. Months in, the effect lowered inhibitions. They got territorial. Rank, protocol, they couldn't understand. We had to establish dominance. After a while, the perks seemed normal. That's it? You created a harem and played king? Ten years in a juvenile fantasy? I can't point to where it all went wrong. But when the beacon was ready, revealing what happened didn't seem like a good idea. What happened to the other officers? Anders found his conscience a little late to step back. He had an accident. Things got tense. End of the day, I was the one with the mechs. I got a little basic in setting examples. But I was kind to my people once things settled down. Seemed like I'd earned some peace. You fought over people like they were toys. Things. Mm hmm The stores from the ship couldn't last forever. You had to know this would end one day. Dining for one can really stretch things out. Besides, I can think of a lot worse retirement plans than stripping down and joining the droolers. That was before the hunters, of course. Dumb or not, I'd feel it if they got their hands on me now. They want blood. I'd prefer to keep it. <laughs> it's all about you. Everything. You didn't feel any responsibility to get out of here for the sake of family? I gave him a good start. He was a smart kid and was better off not following me. We figured that out a long time before I took jobs in deep space. And after things escalated here, it seemed best to just disappear off the galactic map. Till you needed someone to save your ass. What triggered the males to change and threaten you? This planet has some strange cycles to it. I've seen some plants around I never saw before. Odd weather. Maybe some just adapted a little too well. And if you treat them like animals, big shock. They become animals. <sighs> we 
We can help these people. Cerberus can have ships here in days and pull everyone out. Alliance. He's not worth the fuel to haul him out or the air he's breathing. He's damn lucky I don't think he's even worth pulling the trigger. <laughs> I don't know who you are, because you're not any father I remember. Uh, yeah, um... Honestly? Paragon as I am. I'm pretty sure we can spare the ammo. Yeah, you're right. But I'm not taking the shot. My father owned his mistakes. He was a different man. A good man. Half charged. You've seen the crazy ones. This won't stop her. It's not for them, Dad. Yeah. Oh, additional content warning here. Obvious one. Should have uh, mentioned that before I gave him the gun. Yep. So yeah. Screw this mission. Uh, survivors from A are being treated by Alliance personnel with additional Cerberus support. Pleased to see Taylor unharmed psychologically by experience. Jacob Taylor has dealt with his father and is now focused solely on the mission. Barrier, very useful. New outfit, yippee, heavy pistol damage. Alliance ships are inbound to pick up survivors, Commander. We could be long gone by the time they get here. Don't even give them the tail lights. Roger that. What do you mean it wasn't you? Jacob, if I had leaked the information about the Gernsback, I would be smiling at your resolution of the situation. I am not smiling. Nothing goes through this ship, my ship, without a report to you. I had no more reason to believe Jacob's father was alive than he did, but I'm happy to know the situation is behind you. Fine, you didn't forward it, so who did? I did. Shocking. Figures. Who else could get into Cerberus channels? It was hardly classified, just obscure. There was a time when it mattered to you. Sending this along seemed like keeping an old promise. I keep my promises. Miranda, we'll discuss your liberal interpretation of security protocol in private. <laughs> Shepard, Jacob. Ah. Uh, Miranda's been chastised. Or going to be chastised. You good with this, Jacob? It's all bull, Shepard. Captain Taylor's body has some catching up to do, but the man died a long time ago. I've already dealt with that. I guess he was a good enough father that even he can't screw up what he taught me. You had no idea Miranda was behind this. No, she's got a good memory. Selective, but good. I haven't thought about those days in a long time. Can't figure which promise she meant, though. Not sure I really want to know. She requires a better man than I. Come on, we got work to do. Hi, Commander. Shepard. Thanks for the help. 
No problem. Any time, Jacob. On a side note, this is actually the only optional mission in Mass Effect 2 that includes a uh, an elusive man briefing. Thanks for diverting to the Gurns back, Shepard. I appreciate being able to clean up that mess. Maybe not the best way to learn about the relatives, but I'm glad it's done. What do you need? I'm interested in getting to know you better. Already? I'm not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's do this later. Fine. Commander. Oh, did I not already get that from? Uh, Normandy armor. The Asari made Solaris armor upgrade is attached to the ship's superstructure. This will help the ship hold together if hit by a blast powerful enough to penetrate its shields. Heavy pistol damage, which also gives heavy pistol critical. Normandy scientists have prototyped a modification of the traditional smart targeting module, commonly incorporated into high end weaponry. While this technology is commonly used to compensate for wind and recoil, it was adapted uh, to slightly deflect rounds to strike a more vital part of an enemy. I'll probably give myself uh Oh goody, frame rate drops. Nice. Uh I'll probably give myself barrier later. Joker, any new minor spike in the primary core, compensating. I'm pretty sure I have run through all of Joker's uh, lines. I've been thinking about taking up bullfighting. What do you think? No, don't. It's cruel. Bullfighting is a cruel activity. It should be abolished. You know what I could go for right now? A hamburger. Not fat grown, an actual honest to god dead cow. With horseradish. You lost me with the horseradish. That, um, the stuff with Jacob's dad, it's bullshit, right? Because it looked like bullshit to me. Yep. That's it for now. See you, Commander. So yeah, that mission is just, ugh. They really had to make the black guy's dad a deadbeat and a womanizer. Yo, like, really? That's the direction that you got that you went by aware? How may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? Fane would like to see you down in life support on the crew deck. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. Good luck out there, Shepard. Fane would like to speak with you, Commander. Yeah, you mentioned. But hey, at least we've got his... And it actually looks pretty good. His loyalty uh, outfit actually looks pretty good. Oh, whoops, I meant to check... Uh, Menu Master, sorry. I'll need to hit the Citadel again pretty soon. I still haven't actually... Shepard. I heard you wanted to speak with me. Yes. Now that you are here, though, it seems more difficult to talk about. Are you feeling sick? I could get the doctor. No, no. Though I suppose that is a part of it. My mortality has me dwelling on things. All right. I had a family once. I still have a son. His name is Kolyat. I haven't seen him for a very long time. Did something happen to them? I abandoned them. Oh, not all at once. Nothing dramatic. No sneaking out in the middle of the night. No final argument or slammed door. I just did my job. 
I hunted and killed across the galaxy. Away on business, my wife would tell people. I was always away on business. Ah. Uh. How long has it been since you talked? Ten years. He showed me some of his schoolwork and asked if we could dance crazy. We did that when he was younger. What sort of dance is that? It's... I checked my extranet contacts. I expect an update on my next target. The console plays music. Oh, unfashionable. Kolyat jumps into the room. My father runs around in circles. I scoop him up, toss him into the air. He shrieks, laughs, spin me. The console beeps. I put him down. Click the message. Father, he pleads, tugs my sleeve. I need to read this, I say. I don't look at him. The joys of, uh, of a perfect memory. You never mentioned this before. Why now? When my wife departed from her body, I attended to that issue. I left Kolyat in the care of his aunts and uncles. I have not seen him or talked to him since. That's not the choice I expected. Why didn't you raise him yourself? My body is blessed with the skills to take life. The Hanar honed them in me. I have few others. I didn't want that life for Cole yet. I hoped he would find his own way. If he hated me, so be it. He would not have shared the path of sin. I used my contacts to trace Kolyat. He has become disconnected. He does what his body wills. You'll have to explain that one to me. Disconnected. The body is not our true self. The soul is. Body and soul work as one in a whole person. When the soul is weakened by despair or fear, when the body is ill or injured, the individual is disconnected. No longer whole. What's wrong with him? Is he hurt? Something happened that should not have. He knows where I've been, what I've done. I don't know his reasons, but he has gone to the Citadel. He's taken a job as a hitman. I would like your help to stop him. He is... This is not a path he should walk. You don't hire a raw rookie for a contract killing. I'm afraid someone may have seen we share a name and assumed we share skills. I don't know Hopefully, why they don't accept the task. To be closer to you, maybe? That thought haunts me more than any other. Huh. Maybe he name dropped you to get hired. It's possible, but I don't think so. It doesn't seem right. My name. He should not respect it. Thane, I don't have your contacts, and I don't have your tracking skills. Why do you need my help for this? I don't need your help. I want it. The last time I saw my son, they wrapped her body in sea vines. Weighted it with stones. He tries to pull from me. Calls for her. The Hanar lift her off the platform. They sing like bells. The fire has gone to be kindled anew. He begs them not to take her away. They let her body slide into the water. He hits me. Don't let them. Stop them. Why weren't you? Rains. It always rains on Kaje. Warm water pours down his face. Well, that's a sad memory. I didn't mean to make you relive that. Perfect memory. It is sometimes a burden. What made him go to the Citadel? Years ago, I prepared a package for him. A relic of my ill-spent life. I had Volus Bankers store it and arranged for delivery when I died. He acquired it early. I don't really know how. I did wet work on the Citadel around the time his mother died. That may be why he went there. I'll get us to the eh? Citadel as soon as possible. Thank you, Shepard. I'll be meditating until you need me. Yeah. Poor guy. People are talking out there. And I hear it all. Jacob deserves better than a father like that. I probably would have wanted to shoot him too. This one security guy keeps staring at me. I think his name is Bert. I'm used to being watched by security. But they're usually staring at my eyes or watching my hands. I might have to start cloaking through the sea ice. I can't believe the Collectors were once Protheans. I always pictured Protheans being regal, not giant... bugs. Who knows what the Reapers did to them. Creepy. How can I help you, Commander? 
Do you have everything? If you, you happen to find any, back to work. Couldn't remember if I had actually picked up the uh, provisions yet. I was pretty sure I hadn't. I haven't been back to the Citadel uh, to do it yet. Uh, I don't think anyone down here is going to have anything. To well, Zaid will, but actually, even then, Zaid. Oh no, Zaid does have one comment about. Uh, the new armor reinforcements really threw off the gravimetric profile, but engines are good to go. I rebalanced the Gilborn coefficients and adjusted the anterior intakes on the second tier stabilizers. I love it when you talk dirty. <laughs> I like that one. That's... Yeah, that's good naughtiness. This mission takes me back. That's good perviness. Can't say I blame Taylor's pup. A man does what he has to do to survive. Ran up against a Batarian camp, not too different from that one. Job was to erase the whole thing from the map. Men, women, and the man in charge. Learned that day that despots are cowards. You show them you're in charge, not them, and they cry like little girls. It doesn't matter who you are. You got a gun in your face, chances are good you'll do what the other man says. Only two types don't buckle at that point. Train killer. Yeah, uh, should have, that mission, uh, that mission with Jacob's dad does have some similarities as well to, uh, to Apocalypse Now and to Heart of Darkness before it. So. Uh, nice. Singularity. I wanted singularity. You can hold numerous enemies helpless for a long period. Bigger radius. Uh, up to four targets. I think the larger, the larger radius feels uh, like it'll be a little more useful to me. A, hey, here we go. A sorry-made Solaris armor can resist even the tremendous heat and kinetic energy of starship weapons. The armor is nearly unsurpassed in strength because its central material, carbon nanotube sheets woven with diamond chemical vapor deposition, are crushed by mass effect fields into super dense layers able to withstand extreme temperatures. That process also compensates for diamond's brittleness. Diamond armor itself has two limiting disadvantages. First, while nanotubes and CBD diamond construction has become cheaper in recent years, it remains prohibitively expensive to coat starships or aircraft larger than fighters in Solaris material. Second, the armor must be attached to the ship's superstructure, so shock waves from massive firepower can still destroy the metals beneath the armor itself. A popular misconception holds that the diamond composition of Solaris armor gives it its sparkle. In fact, atmospheric nitrogen impurities during the super hot forging process give the armor its metallic gray or yellow sheen. Neat. Sounds cool. Anyway, that's another loyalty mission down. Got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more, plus the final crewmate, the final squad mate. Uh, next time... Eh, not sure who I'll do next time. Kind of considering just, like... Honestly, there's a part of me that just kind of wants to, like, go in this direction. Right to left. Do Thame and Grunt, Miranda. I'll probably end up doing Zaid next, I'm thinking. 
Thane and Tamara actually probably would be uh, better ones to do. But whatever. I'll decide later. Uh, for now, thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice have a nice day.